Welcome back to Bombastic Nation and Ting and Ting and Ting. I'm Mr. Giant. Yes, I. I'm back with more vibe for all you. And this one here, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a little different one. I, I used to do some of these before and I, I kind of stopped doing it. But this one is a, just a, huh, what did they do? What did they eat? You know what I mean? This one is uh, called What Aztecs Were Eaten Before European Contact. You know, I mean, I remember as a kid sitting uh, on the beach wondering what people, what other kids around the world ate. What's their favorite food, you know? What kind of candy did they, did they eat and stuff like that, you know? Just the different cultures, I used to wonder that while sitting on the beach, you know? And uh, so that's why I try different cuisines when I get the chance. Now, I'm a very picky eater, but I'll try anything, you know, just to see, especially if it's a cultural dish, a traditional cultural dish, I'll try it. But anyway, let's go ahead and YouTube and Sim Simmer. Like I said, this one is called What Aztecs Were Eaten Before European Contact. Let's check it out. Throughout the 14th and 15th centuries, the area that is now Mexico was home to a thriving civilization known as the Aztecs. Prior to being overthrown by the Spanish crown through conquistador Hernan Cortes in 1521, Cortez. this complex Mesoamerican him. culture developed a unique <coughs> cuisine that still remains popular. So, today we're going to take a look at what Aztecs were eating before European contact. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel and let us know in the comments below what other Mesoamerican topics you would like to hear about. Okay, welcome to Aztec. Would you like to see a menu? Sure do. Sure. If you like chocolate, you owe a big thank you to the Aztecs, who made several significant contributions to its development. For the Aztecs, what they referred to as chocolate was considered to be a food of the gods, which, Ooh, to be fair, chocolate. is what most people still yeah. consider it today. Now, just so we're clear, chocolate, as the Aztecs do it, was very different from the chocolate of modern times. For one thing, it wasn't sweet. It also wasn't formed into bars. In fact, it wasn't really formed into anything. The Aztecs actually made a drink out of the cacao seed rather than transforming it into the solid treat it's used to make now. Hmm. The effects of that drink were detailed in the Florentine Codex, a 16th century work written by Bernardino de Sagún, a Spanish monk living in Mesoamerica. According to him, drinking too much cacao would make a person drunk, dizzy, confused, sick, in his words, deranged. In other words, a typical Friday night out. Yeah. Well, there has been a lot of speculation on the topic. I always wonder if you make like a, a pure chocolate alcohol drink. I don't think I've ever seen one of those, but then I don't drink much, so there probably is one out there. But apparently, if you just drink the chocolate like they, they, they had it there, it'll get you drunk. Over the years, historians aren't exactly sure what exactly made the drink intoxicating. What is known, however, is that the cacao tree had religious significance to the Aztecs, and the drink was used in various rituals. The Aztec diet incorporated many foods, but it revolved principally around the consumption of maize, or what is today known as corn. One well-known example of how maize was incorporated into the Aztec diet is in the now world-famous tortilla. The tortillas they made back then were as diverse in size, shape, and function as they are now, and everyone in the Aztec Empire, regardless of social class, consumed them. The flour used by Aztecs to make tortillas came from corn that went through a process called nixtamalization. The kernels were boiled in water and ashes from juniper wood. They were then soaked overnight until the hard outer part of each kernel had detached. The remaining corn was then ground into flour. The Florentine Codex goes into a fair amount of detail about the many tortilla options available to food shoppers in Tenochtitlan. According to the Codex, the food seller sells folded tortillas, thick tortillas, and coarse tortillas. He sells tortillas with turkey eggs, tortillas made with honey, pressed ones, gloves. So according to this, tortillas is a is an Aztec uh, food, not uh, you know, and now it's like Hispanic because I guess the. Not a guess, but the fact is the, the, the Spanish sort of conquered that region there. So, you know, they, they get the, they get the, what is it, the, the honor of being ones who brought us tortillas. But it's an old Aztec 
thing. That's interesting. I don't know how many of y'all eat tortillas across the world and stuff, but I think every a lot of people have Aztecs. That's pretty cool. Shaped tortillas, plain tortillas, assorted ones, braised ones, sweet tortillas, amaranth seed tortillas, squash tortillas, green maize tortillas, brick shaped tortillas, tuna cactus tortillas, broken crumbled old tortillas, cold tortillas, toasted ones, dry tortillas, and stinking tortillas. It's an appetizing sounding menu, except for maybe the stinking tortillas. Depends on what they stink of, makes a difference. The amaranth plant possessed religious significance for the Aztecs, and its seeds and leaves were used in various types of cuisine. You notice that with the Aztecs, a lot of the stuff that had a, a spiritual significance had something to do with plants and Mother Nature and stuff like that. Amaranth seeds could be cooked, combined with sweeteners like agave to make dough, or added to other dishes. For lords and upper classes, it was cooked in tamales, especially around festival days. During these celebrations, it was even possible for commoners to get their hands on these specialties. The Florentine Codex actually describes the preparation of some varieties, such as tamales made of maize flowers with brown amaranth seeds and cherries added and tamales stuffed with amaranth greens. This stuff doesn't you know, sound too bad. That Bernardino Seguin had a hankering for Mexican food? Even in an empire where food was plentiful, the wealthy still had access to a little more than everyone else. The upper classes in the Aztec Empire enjoyed flavorful sauces, stews, and casseroles. The Florentine Codex describes one particular casserole devoured by lords as a kind of casserole of fowl made in their fashion with red chili and with tomatoes and ground squash seeds, a dish which is now called pipian. Also known as pepian, this dish is today a quintessential Guatemalan stew. While it has evolved through the centuries, the dish actually still carries many of its original traits. In its modern form, it's typically served with one meat, although there also exist recipes for a full three meat version. It always contains vegetables and fruits, such as pear, squash, carrot, potato, and corn on the cob. And the conventional wisdom is that it should be thick and rich, with a wealth of roasted spices blended together. Oh, I would eat it. I would, I would chow down on that like crazy. I would. That looks real good there. Spices blended together. Evidence shows that avocado trees were cultivated in the Americas as early as 750 BCE. And a guacamole, or avocado sauce, is essentially just a very early version of guacamole. In fact, it was the Spanish who turned the word aguaca into the word aguacate, which eventually evolved into avocado. Meanwhile, the term guacamole was slowly transformed into the word guacamole. Anyway, the pre-Columbian Aztecs would have eaten these mashed avocados with tomatoes and some coriander leaves. The Spanish pick See how you see the language change there? So the English we speak now, probably somebody from way back when, when they first started speaking English as the main language around the world, wouldn't understand us. Hell, we don't understand each other sometimes when we speak English. I live in West Virginia, and some people can't understand when I start, when my accent is thick, maybe it's not so much the English, maybe it's the rhythm of, of the syllables and stuff, the way we say it, that's the problem. Like you emphasize certain parts of the word more than others, with making it sound, making it sound different than what the other person speaking the same language. You know, it's kind of, it's not confusing really, it's just, it's going to change, especially with everybody mingling and mixing and stuff like that. That's kind of like what's happening here. Picked up this recipe, <coughs> brought it back to Europe, and added a few twists of their own, which is how we get the modern version of the dish. That being said, it's still not that different from what the Aztecs enjoyed. One historian even nostalgically suggested that when wrapped in a freshly made maize tortilla, or even enjoyed on a tortilla chip, a wakamui might ever so distantly evoke the taste of Tenochtitlan. The land around Tenochtitlan was swampy and muddy, and the Aztecs took full agricultural advantage of the situation. They constructed artificial farming islands called chinampas, made by building up mud from the bottoms of lakes and swamps. Canals were then put in place around these chinampas to make them accessible and to keep water flowing around them. But the Aztecs also used the surrounding lakes to add to their living food sources. They feasted on frogs, water bugs, and lake shrimp, 
but they also didn't hesitate to munch on eggs and larvae from both bugs and amphibians. In fact, one of their delicacies was the axolotl, a larval salamander. According to the Florentine Codex, these lake-dwelling creatures could be prepared in a variety of ways. Frog tamales, frog with grains of maize, axolotl with grains of maize, axolotl tamales, tadpoles with grains of maize, and that's just to name a few. I don't know, boy. It was Tadpoles. actually the pre-Aztec peoples who lived in the area that is now Mexico between 800 BCE and 200 BCE that were the first to domesticate turkeys. These early adopters would eat the bird's meat and eggs for protein and even use their feathers for decorative purposes. Their Mesoamerican descendants continued the tradition, and the turkeys that we still eat today owe their existence directly to those practices. These domesticated turkeys were sources of food alongside their wild brethren, which tended to be smaller and they took those people's own turkey vibe and tried to sell it to us as, you know, the glorious day that they came together for dinner. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. And considerably less meaty. Some of these alternate meats the Aztecs also fed on came from deer, peccary, rabbits, jackrabbits, mice, armadillos, snakes, gophers, opossums, and iguanas. These animals, once captured, were fattened up in captivity until they were eaten. Tequitat, which means stone dung in the Aztec language Nahuatl, is a little more appetizing than its name might imply. It's actually an edible algae or seaweed which the I Aztecs was about would to collect say, with tools like that. don't look appetizing. Spades. Once gathered, it would be dried in the sun. After it was dry, the tequitat would be formed into cakes, dried again, and then used to make tortillas. According to Dia del Castillo, one of the first Spaniards to visit Tenochtitlan, there were fishmongers and others who sold little loaves which they made out of a sort of slime, which they gathered from the Great Lake, which they thicken and they make loaves of it, which taste like cheese. A later writer also compared cool. their flavor to cheese, except they found it less pleasing, and with a certain taste of mud. Known as the corn mushroom, corn smut, or Mexican truffles, Cuitlacoche is a corn fungus which today is seen as a gourmet food. What? In Nahuatl, the word Cuitlacoche translates to sleeping excrescence. This is because the fungus affects the growth of corn kernels. You know an, an idea? Open up a restaurant and try to get ancient recipes to use? That would probably be a good idea. I could see people come in to go try out the ancient foods. In essence, causing them to fall asleep. This sounds like a bad thing, but the Aztecs ultimately saw the effect as a blessing in disguise because they still got sustenance out of the fungus that was ruining their beloved maize. That's a half glass full way of looking at fungus. When it comes to preparing wheat lacoche in the kitchen, many authorities agree that the young white fungus tastes good raw, while the aged black fungus is better cooked. Like many other peoples, the Aztecs liked to drink. In fact, for this ancient Mesoamerican culture, drinking was a lot more than just recreational. It was ceremonial and ritualistic. Apti, also known as pulque, was a fermented drink derived from the sweet sap of the agave plant. The Aztecs referred to this plant as maguey, and it's affiliated with the pulque goddess Maya Huel. The drink was consumed for various rituals, often from intricate vessels. It would be consumed by priests and sacrificial victims before ceremonies, and was used by the nobility to celebrate victories. The Aztecs also had various rules and guidelines in place for its consumption and creation. For example, when it came to the commoners, only the elder early and pregnant women were allowed to partake and for the man the rich is drinking it up having a big old good time and then they 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 they're telling the people how they how they could partake of it man they even controlling the want to control the way you eat so that they could be exclusive you know what i mean for those who brew the drink they would have to abstain from sex, as intercourse was believed to ruin the process. However, despite its obvious cultural importance to the Aztecs, the drink is actually believed to predate their culture. Aztec society they got it was from somebody else. Stratified, and while the upper tiers and royalty enjoyed rich and meaty foods, the lowest ranks were forced to adhere to mostly vegetarian diets. One example of this is pinoli, 
which is the Nahuatl word for cornmeal. Pinoli was something of a testament to the itinerant nature of life for poorer or contracted Aztecs. This simple meal of ground and toasted maize kept well, and travelers or warriors could carry it for access to a quick and filling dish. While lacking in flavor, pinoli could be mixed with water and other ingredients, such as cacao, to make it more enjoyable. These sorts of instant meals, referred to as atoli, were popular among the lower class Aztecs. Think of them as the ancient Mesoamerican equivalent of TV dinners. So what do you think? Which of these Aztec foods sounds the most delicious? The one, the one that sounds the most delicious is the one that's still being made today that looks like a, a goulash. I hope I'm using the right, because I don't really know what a goulash is. But anyway, the meat and the corn and yeah, that's some good. That's some real good there. You know what I mean? Thank you all for watching this with me. I'm going to leave a link in the description to this video. Go there, check out the channel, see what else they have going on there. They, I, I could tell on the screen right now, if you see, it's showing uh, Aztec's life, life as a Mayan. I'm going to have to go back and check these people out because, you know, this is done my way. So I might know a little bit more about the stuff it takes. But anyway, I hope you guys are taking care of each other, man. Take care of each other. A human is a human is a human. Cool runnings, alright?